In today's last coding lesson, we are going to see an introduction to the Unity Dots system. Okay, you need to download uh, the code of the project because uh, we are going to start from a different version of Unity, one that is ready for the, to deal with uh, Dots system. Okay, so please download this uh, this project from this link. So far, we have seen uh, object-oriented programming whose main advantages are that uh, help us to organize the code in classes and data structures that are human readable, that it allows for a way, a common ground to understand for all the programmers to create bigger and more stable projects, and that it's a code designed by humans for humans. The DOT system is a change in the way uh, to think how to program. So now it's about creating code that it's optimized for the machines to understand. So it's designed by humans for machines. It takes advantage of the multi-threading capacity of the machines. The DOT system is composed by three pillars that are the entity component system. This is a new way to think to uh, create code that the machine is going to process and optimize in a better way. The job system, a simple method uh, to generate multi-threaded code, and the Burst compiler that uh, allows us to generate fast and optimized native code. As a recent example of the use of Unity Dots, we have, for example, this game. You have to consider that Unity Dots is still on experimental stage, so you are not going to see a lot of uh, games developed with, with that. But here you can get a glimpse of the future about uh, games that require uh, a really intensive uh, performance. As you can see here, literally, there are uh, thousands of, un of concurrent units uh, performing uh, logic at the same time. So. So this would have been impossible to do it with without uh, the Unity Dot system. In a really extreme and simplified way to understand the Dot system, Dots could be considered as uh, an independent module outside the normal program execution. Okay, so you would have your normal code. Uh, and you would program as always. But uh, if you require from the DOT system to perform some intensive operation, you are going to send all the necessary information for the DOT system to perform the, the whole operation. The DOT system uh, is possible that the DOT system can communicate with the normal code, but uh, then we, uh, we would lose the main purpose of, of the DOT system. That is that here you can uh, send uh, really intensive operations and just right there, uh, are, these operations are getting optimized in order to be performed in the multi-threaded capacity. Okay, so this would require uh, quite a change of the mindset in order to take advantage of the whole system. So in short, we are going to set to dots all the data that, uh, the, that that system needs to perform the operation. And after that operation has been performed, then we would proceed to collect the results and apply the results to our uh, normal code. So the entity component system is the part of the DOT system that uh, we are going to, to study, to practice. The official definition reads like this. The entity component system is a software architectural pattern mostly used on video game development for a storage of game world objects. An ECS follows the pattern of entities with components of data. In short, we define three parts. The part of the entity, the entities or things that populate your game or program, the part of the component, the data associated to the previous entities, by, but organized by the data itself, and the part of the system that is the logic that transforms the previous data component from its current state to the next state. 
So uh, how we are going to apply this knowledge into our project? What we are going to do, we are going to create a um, tower defense uh, prototype. We are going to create uh, multiple towers uh, and uh, these towers are going to kill uh, the spawned enemies. Okay, so we will start by creating the new uh, prefab tower. Okay, from uh, the an existing enemy. You can take, uh, I recommend you to take uh, this enemy uh, to work as, as the tower. And you are going to remove all the components except rotate to target. Okay. And then you will create a new script called tower that will inherit from the enemy. And you would add it to the previous refab. Okay. So go ahead and, and do it. And the result should look similar to this. We have taken uh, just, uh, for example, the enemy spawn. We have unpacked it and uh, we have replaced the, the 3D model by the one that I told you about. OK, and uh, we have uh, created the um, script tower that we have attached to the new uh, to the new prefab. So the next thing that we are going to do, we are going to overwrite to extend the start method with this code. Okay. What we are interested in is that we are going to use uh, our existing uh, logic for the commands also for the tower. So uh, we are overriding, we are extending the start method just to start in the await instructions state. And we are going to create a new event that we will use to uh, register the new tower. OK, so what you are going to do next is, first of all, uh, you are going to create a new event. OK, the event tower register new. And this event is going to be uh, dispatched right here and listen it in the level controller. OK. and. It, uh, you would add the new tower to a list of towers. The next thing that you are going to do is just to update the logic in the update method of the level controller and also destroy all the towers in the destroyed method of the level controller. So go ahead and do it.
And the code should look similar to this. What we have first done, we have listened for the event that tell us that a new um, tower has been created. And we have added this tower to a list that we have declared on the level controller. Okay, we just first check that if we uh, haven't already added the tower and if uh, we don't have the tower, we add it. And on the update, we are just running the logic for the towers. And finally, on the destroyed method, we are just releasing the memory allocated for, for the towers. Okay. In the next step of this exercise, what we are going to do, we are going to create a new command called command shoot at. And this new command, uh, what we'll do is to shoot at a target when it is in range. Okay, this command will be added to our uh, tower script because what we want for, from the tower is that it shoots to the most nearby enemy. Okay, so go ahead and do it. And the result uh, could look uh, similar to this. Uh, what we have first done is to just copy paste the, the attack method to uh, just to modify it in order to meet uh, what we want to do. And uh, we have renamed it to command shoot at, and uh, we are just uh, using only uh, the necessary uh, variables in order to perform these operations, okay? So we have our avatar uh, who is going to do the, the command, the action, uh, some parameters related to the range of attack, the timeout of attack, uh, the time of attack. And uh, here we have declared a public uh, method to set the target because uh, what we are interested to do is uh, that the tower gets the closest uh, enemy to its position okay so we are going to use this method to set the target that the tower is going to shoot at uh, the next thing that we have done in the execute method what we are doing is that we are checking if uh, a target is in range and if it's in range it would proceed to shoot at the target just like we did with the command command attack we almost share the same the same behavior and uh, if uh, the target uh, goes um, away from the attack range then we uh, put this variable to false and uh, in the case that it, it's not in the attack range then we would be checking if the next target is inside the attack range Finally, for the East Fish, it's uh, going to be a, an action that is always to be performed. There is no finish uh, to, to this action. East blocking uh, is going to be also true. And in the destroy method, we are just releasing the uh, linked resources.
if you had uh, issues to implement it, you can download the, the script from this link. Now back to the tower script, what we are going to do is that on the start method, we are going to create uh, the command, the command shoot at, and we are going to assign it to the same tower, okay? And in, in its update logic method, uh, what uh, you are going to do is that you are going to call a method that you are going to create, a new method that you are going to create that it's going to get closest enemy nearby, that will look for the closest enemy to a position. And if there is no enemy, it will return the player. The reason why uh, we are interested right now to return the player is that uh, for the initial test, we are going just to place one tower. And uh, this tower, uh, we are going to make that uh, this tower shoot at the player, shoot at us. Okay, just to test that everything is working. That's why, aside from looking for the closest enemy, you are going to also return the player if the player is closer than any enemy. From the output of the previous method, you will get the, the avatar that you would use the set target method of the command shoot at to set the target that the tower is going to shoot at. Okay, so go ahead and do it. And the code should look similar to this. We have started in the tower script and we have created uh, our command, okay? And we have declared one uh, public variable member that can be customized through the editor. That would be the frequency of the uh, attack of the tower. And we have also declared a private member variable uh, that is a reference to the command shoot at that uh, we need in order to update, to set uh, the closest target to the to the tower. Okay, so on the start, we initialize the, the command. We forgot to assign the command, so we are going to do it right here. We are assigning the command. Okay, and in the update logic, we are checking if this command is different from null. We are just setting the closest target to uh, the tower. Uh, we have created this, this method and this method has two parameters, the parameter of the same tower and the position. Why the same tower? Because we need uh, the source in order to avoid, uh, to consider it in the process of selecting a, 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 the closest target, okay? So what we are doing in the closest target is going through all the list of enemies, 
okay, and getting the closest uh, to the to this position. And uh, what we are doing next is, uh, as I told you, um, we are interested right now that uh, the tower uh, shoot at us in order to test it. So we are checking if the distance with the local player is uh, closer than the distance with any of the enemies, it will return the same uh, avatar of the player. So now it's time for the um, go to the uh, level zero prefab. We are going to place one tower on the scene and we are going to run it. And so let's go and do it. Go to the Unity project, select the level zero, add a tower. Okay, right here. Just create a section inside the avatars towers and place that one right there. Okay, we are going to place the, the other towers are going to be place it there. Okay, so we are going to place. If we proceed to run, when we get close to um, to the tower, we would get shot. Okay, we are not getting shot. The reason why we are not getting shot is that we haven't set up the bullet of of the tower. So we are going to fix that. We are going to choose an enemy bullet. Try again. And let's see if it shoots at us. Okay, it is shooting at us. It is shooting at the enemy. The speed of of the of the bullet seems to be um, too slow to hit the spawned enemies. We will fix that later. So now we are going to create a custom bullet only for the tower, and the new bullet is going to have uh, its collider to. Uh, is triggered to true. Okay, so far the bullets are working with uh, the trigger to set to false, but uh, in our particular case, uh, for the bullet for the tower, is going to have the collider, the property is triggered from the collider to true. The bullet should uh, be fast enough to hit the target, so it's enough with uh, a speed 150. And uh, you are going to uh, set the scale of the bullet to one, because uh, for the for the moment we want it uh, really big to be able to to see it. I let you to decide if you want to implement the necessary changes on the bullet script, or or uh, you can just uh, copy paste the the script that I am going to provide to you. So let's go to the project. Let's take a new bullet. And this bullet, we are going to unpack it and we are going to rename it. Okay, so it would be the bullet tower. And this bullet is going to, uh, let's make it a black bullet. Okay, and this bullet is going to have the property uh, of the collider to its trigger. Okay, we are going to convert it, uh, this bullet into a prefab and we are going to assign it to the um, to the tower prefab so select the tower prefab and on the tower prefab you can just drag the bullet tower okay uh, remember that uh, we need to scale uh, the bullet to, to one to make it uh, really big because we want it visible okay and for the for the part of the code, as I told you, you have the option to do it or not, to practice that or not. What I am doing right here is just um, updating the script bullet. So when the method on trigger enter is being called, we apply the collision effects. As you can see, these are the two methods that are considered in order to apply the effects. The on collision enter, that is the method that we have used so far, 
and the on-trigger enter. That is uh, the method uh, that it's going to be used in the case of the bullet of the tower that has the property uh, trigger to to true. Let's make let's make a, a quick test just to verify that uh, this bullet is being shot. Okay. Okay, it seems that he's shooting at a nearby enemy. Okay, and okay, he's shooting. Let's fix the the speed of the bullet. The speed of the bullet is going to be 150. Let's try it again. Okay, let's see. Okay, now it's hitting the target and it's killing the enemies. Perfect. So the next step that we are going to do, we are going to uh, place enough towers so we can uh, barely kill all the enemies uh, that are spawned uh, before they reach their target. And we are also going to increase uh, the enemy spawn life in order uh, not to be killed just by the first uh, towers. Um, so mm, let's go and do it. Go to the project, select the level zero, and place as many towers as you like. Okay. So let's run the project and we got killed. That means that we still have the code on the level controller that in the case that there is no in enemy nearby, it will take as a target the player. And we are not interested on that. So just comment or remove the code that uh, gets the player instead of uh, the closest enemy and run it again. Okay, let's take uh, a different point of view, select the free camera, okay, and as you can see, all the towers are with a frequency, a shot frequency of one, and uh, they can handle uh, pretty fast the uh, enemies. So let's go to change that, let's go to make this, the life of the spawned enemy to maybe 3000. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, let's change to the free camera. And now the enemies are able to resist a little bit longer. Okay, good. So it's time to stress out the system. You are going to set uh, the initial life of the enemies to a huge value, okay? And you are going to set the uh, timeout, uh, the frequency of the shooting of the towers to also an insane value. What we want is to create thousands of bullets at the same time. So we are going to uh, make the whole uh, application frame rate drop to an insane level, okay? So let's let's do it. Let's take, uh, for example, let's start with the towers, and we are going to set the frequency of all the towers to the value of zero zero one. So for each second, each tower is going to shoot one hundred bullets. Okay. So with this, uh, with this change, we are going to stress out the system uh, quite a lot. And we are going to set 
the life of the enemy spawn to also a huge value for example 100,000 I think that it would be enough and now if we proceed to run as you can see here in the bottom part of the screen that is the the frame rate okay and the frame rate has dropped to uh, a frame rate of uh, around 50 and uh, 50 40 it's going to decrease and um, more or less the average uh, frame rate at least for in my computer it's going to mm, be around uh, 13 to 12 okay so clearly the system can handle this current situation in the case that you got stuck in the way you can download the whole project uh, from this link and continue from there so now that we have created a project uh, that uh, cannot be uh, handled by traditional means we are going to do all the necessary steps in order to use uh, the unity dot system in particular the entity component system to increase uh, the performance of of the application okay but first of all we are going to do some intermediate steps in order to ease the process what we are going to do just right now is uh, disconnect a little bit uh, the bullets from the mono behavior so what we are going to do now is that instead of using uh, the provided uh, collision system uh, from unity from mono behavior uh, that uh, allow us to use on trigger enter and on collision enter to detect when there is collision we are going to check uh, the collision using the bounds of uh, provided by the collider what we want is that uh, this collision can be performed uh, not in the part of uh, the normal programming but in the part of the dot system okay so what we are going to do first is uh, we are going to create a component pattern okay and we are going to create it uh, inside the library because it's something that other uh, other projects can benefit from and uh, this component pattern uh, will, will get the collider of of the game object and will have a, a public method that will be called uh, check intersect that will return true or false depending if the two bounding boxes intersect okay when you have this component pattern then you would add it to the uh, enemy spawn prefab so go ahead and do it And the result should look similar to this. What we have first done is in the library, in utils, in this folder, we have created the new script is avatar shootable that it gets uh, the collider and uh, it provides this public uh, function that will check if two bounding boxes intersect why we are doing this because uh, this is a method that we can use in the dot system that doesn't require from the mono behavior remember that uh, the dot system is a system that it's outside the normal uh, programming so we need to provide it with all the necessary data so it didn't need to access to the uh, normal programming behavior the next thing that we have done is just to add this component pattern to the uh, enemy spawn but we are also going to add this component pattern to all the enemies okay so is our shootable we are adding it to all the enemies and we are also going to add in the level zero prefab for all the enemies that are right here we are also going to add component pattern is avatar shootable okay so uh, the towers uh, are going to attack all the enemies in the in the level 
So now back to the level controller script, you are going to create a private member variable that is going to be a list of uh, game objects that has the component is avatar shootable. And you are going to add elements to that list when a new uh, enemy has been registered. Okay. So when a new enemy has been registered, what you are going to do is that you are going to check if uh, it has the uh, component is avatar shootable and you are going to add it to the list. And next you, you are going to create a new function, check shoot collision that will go through all the uh, items, all the elements in the array of, of avatar uh, to shoot and it will check if uh, a bounce that is going to be sent as a parameter that will be the bounce of the bullet is inside any of the uh, registered objects in that list. Okay, so go ahead and do it. And the result should look similar to this. We have created a list of uh, elements that are going to have uh, the is avatar uh, shootable component. Then next on the moment that we are registering a new enemy, we check if that new enemy has the component is avatar shootable. And if it has it, we add this new element to the list. Finally, we are using the this list in order to check if the bounce of a particular bullet is intersecting with any of the elements that are inside that list. The last step that we need to do in order to replace uh, the previous uh, collision system with our own method to check the collisions is this one. We are going to remove all the rigid bodies from the from the bullet and we are going to leave uh, only the colliders. On the bullet script, we are going to create a new uh, private member variable where we will uh, store the object, uh, the avatar that has shoot that particular bullet. What we want is just to avoid hitting the same uh, object that is shooting. Okay, the next thing that you are going to do on the method shoot, you are going to consider the new parameter and on the method update of the bullet script, you are going to move always the, uh, the bullet through the transform and not the rigid body. Okay, so remember that we have uh, this uh, protected variable member that we can use in order to do that. Finally, uh, you are going to use the method check uh, shoot collision in order to check if the bullet is colliding with any of the registered uh, is shootable avatars uh, that are stored in the level controller. If uh, there is a collision with any of them, you are going to get the component uh, avatar from that uh, object and you are going to decrease the life. So go ahead and do it.
Okay, so uh, the code should look similar to this. What we have done is uh, for the bullet script, we have created uh, just a, a private member variable that will keep uh, the game object who has shot the, the bullet. Okay, uh, we initialize that, uh, that value with uh, a new parameter. And we are also declaring a new uh, private member variable where we will keep uh, the reference to our own collider, the collider of the bullet. Remember that uh, before of that, we have selected all the uh, prefabs and we have removed the uh, rigid body because right now we are going to use the transform instead of the rigid body to move all these objects. Okay, so here we are getting the collider and just in the update uh, logic method, just after uh, moving the position of the bullet, we are just checking uh, if uh, we are colliding uh, with any of the uh, objects that are stored in the level controller on the list of avatars to shoot. What we are doing in the bullet is uh, we are uh, calling that a function with uh, the game object that who has shot uh, that bullet and with the bounce of the bullet okay and that information we are checking if we are colliding with any existing enemy okay if we are colliding with an existing enemy okay this won't be null and we will apply the collision effects as we were doing before okay by this way we have uh, fully disconnected uh, the bullet from the mono behavior methods uh, that we were using before uh, that were on collision enter and on trigger enter and we are using our own method to detect the collisions this will help us out in order to move this logic to the dots system another important thing is that we are going to avoid to use this event uh, bullet has started because this event right now with the towers uh, shooting at uh, so high frequency this event is being triggered many 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 times so we are going to avoid to use this this uh, this event we can remove it completely from the list of of events and we are going to fix it uh, this right here so we are going just to register directly the the bullet in the level controller okay register bullet we are going to provide the bullet and we are going to implement this method register bullet so we go to the level controller and we are going to click for register bullets bullets new bullet and we are going to move what we were doing in when we we're triggering the the event okay so we are going to move the logic from here to the new methods and also we are going to move the bullet destroyed we are not interested to also dispatch this event so we are going to remove it from the list of events to dispatch and also we are going to create a new method in the levels controller in order to remove the bullets so bullet void remove bullets okay and now let's fix let's fix uh, where we were where we were um, removing the bullet that should be on the bullet script on the destroy bullet so now we are calling the level controller instance remove bullet okay so now we are not using the the event system in order to dispatch when a, a bullet has been created because the event system only works uh, with uh, events that are not too frequent and uh, by doing uh, by calling directly to the level controller we are avoiding uh, sending an event that everybody who is listening for events is going to listen 
that will help us to improve the, the performance. If we proceed to run the project, change to the free camera, and something has happened. And what I have missed is that on the bullet script, now that we don't have uh, the rigid body, now we need to use the transform. And in order to use the transform, we have to set this uh, protected member variable that we inherit from avatar that we were already using to um, select if we were using uh, the rigid body to move or directly if we were using the transform to move okay so make this uh, this change so assign to false uh, this protected variable and now the bullets uh, are going to use the transform in order to move Okay, so change to the free camera. And as you can see, we are getting slightly better performance. The performance is going to drop quite quite a lot, but we are even still getting a little bit better than uh, just with only mono behavior. With only mono behavior, by this time we were already in 12 uh, frames per second. And here it seems that we are on a 16 frames per second stability. Just in case that uh, you got lost uh, during the exercise, uh, you can download uh, what we have done so far uh, from this link and continue from there. And uh, what we are going to do next is now to start using uh, the entity component system in order to improve the performance. First of all, we are going to import uh, all the necessary packages uh, in order to use the dot system and the entity component system. So go to the Unity project and on the package manager, what you are going to do is on advanced settings, you are going to enable the pre-release packages and also show the dependencies, okay? Now, you are going to add a package from JIT URL, okay? And the package that you are going to add is going to be this one. So press add and wait for uh, Unity to install the whole package. If everything has been imported correctly, if you check on the Unity project, you should get uh, the install uh, libraries, okay? You and uh, many of these libraries are on experimental stage, okay? So mm, we are not uh, there yet in the terms of stability, but uh, they are good enough to start learning so when they are ready, uh, you can be productive. From now on, I am going to guide you uh, through all the process of uh, using uh, the entity component system in order to manage uh, the bullets and its collision with, with the enemies. And the first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to create a singleton script called uh, bullets controller in uh, this folder. Okay, so go to the project and in the folder uh, controllers in the folder game we are going to do a little bit of reorganization for example we are going to create the folder bullets we are going to create other folders like folder items where we will move logic related with the items we will create the folder level and move the script level there and the script enemy spawner also there. The next thing that we are going to do is right now we are going to create the, the bullets controller. Okay, so create a new script, bullets controller and we are going to edit it and convert it into a singleton. Okay. So first of all, 
it belongs to the namespace of the game. So this is going to be here. Next, it's going to have a accessor for the singleton. Okay, so this is going to be here. And this controller, we are going to create a new prefab. Okay, in the fold in the folder controllers here, we will create a new prefab as bullets controller. And here we will add the component bullets controller. Next, uh, we need to in instantiate the bullets controller the same way we did it with the other controller. So we are going to add a new entry in the uh, list of controllers of the game controller and we are going to place there in the last item the new bullets controller now we can go back to the to the code and we are going to add on the start method this code that will allow us to create our first entity okay just import the necessary libraries control dot using unity entities Okay, and we are good to create our first entity. Okay, so first of all, we are going to open windows related with the, um, with the entities. Okay, so we are going to open and leave it uh, maybe right here. Okay, this is the archetypes. Uh, let's open the components. So you would have this uh, this interface in order to check all the elements uh, connected with uh, the entity component system. Okay. Uh, so right now we are good to go. We can just uh, play initialize because we are going to be able to create our first entity. Okay. So we are getting some errors. And that means that we still need to close the project and uh, reload it again. We miss that part. So just save the project, close it and open it again. Okay. So let's open again the windows. Right now, the, the one that uh, we are most interested will be the dots hierarchy window, where it will be displayed uh, the entities that uh, we are using. Okay, so if we proceed to play, okay, this is the entity that we have just created. Just for the sake of testing, just create several entities, play it again, and notice that there will be more entries in the dots hierarchy. As you can see, we have more entries and these are the elements that uh, the entity component system uh, is going to use in order to perform uh, its logic. In relationship with the other windows, the systems will uh, take uh, the entities and will work with them. The components are uh, components that are related, uh, that can be connected with the entities that uh, store data. Okay, so you will, you would have your entities and uh, for your entities, you will add them components. Okay, that I, I want to add them a, a component of a mesh render or a custom component like it's going to be our case. You can add to these entities in a similar way that like you were doing with uh, your your game objects, you can add it uh, component data. And uh, the systems are going to access to these entities, will access to the components, the components of these entities, and they will perform its logic in the most optimized way. So now we are going to make all the necessary changes in order to use the entity component system for the implementation of our bullet system. The first thing that we are going to create is going to be the component. Okay. So we are going to create this script bullet component. So go to the code and 
on the bullets folder we can just copy paste we are going to rename this script and we are going to copy this component okay and what we are doing here is create a component of data that will be attached to an entity okay this is only data and this is important uh, the type of data that uh, we are dealing here uh, it used to be uh, simple types so forget about game objects forget about uh, something that connects with the logic of the normal uh, code okay so here you are going to define only uh, basic types of data or data that you are only going to use uh, in the in the entity component system so this uh, bullet component we are going to add it to an entity okay so so far on the start method of the bullets controller we were creating as a test the the entities but what we are going to do next is that instead of uh, using the level controller to uh, shoot the bullet we are going to use the bullet controller okay so what we are going to do is first of all let's create a private member variable keeping the reference to the entity manager and right here we are going to implement the public method that will be called when we are shooting a bullet what will happen here is that we are going to create an entity like this and to this entity we are going to add it a component that it's the one that we have just created okay so so far we have uh, two parts of the entity component system we have created the entity we have added the, the component okay the next thing that we will do is the system the system that will make uh, the bullet move but uh, before of that so let's make all the necessary changes in the code so instead of shooting like we are doing just shoot with the bullet controller so what we are going to do is in all the places where we were shooting okay here local shoot so instead of instantiating like this what we are going to do is just calling to the bullets controller the next one that was shooting was the enemy okay so So now that we are using our bullets controller uh, to shoot, it's time to test it. But first of all, we are going to disable all the towers before testing because uh, the test that we are going to do is to shoot uh, with the player. The player is going to shoot. That way uh, we are going to check if uh, when we press the mouse button, we are going to create an entity. Okay, so uh, go to the project, disable all the towers of uh, the level zero okay just select the the tower container and here disable all of them and now you can proceed to run okay okay so now we play there are no towers and when we press the mouse button we are going to create entities okay so right now the player is creating these entities okay so far for our shoot we have our entity we have the component that it's attached to that entity and now we are going to implement the system that is going to work 
with uh, the entities and its attached components. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to create the script called bullet system. So go to the code. And in here, we are going to create the script bullet system. And this bullet system is going to move the bullets and check if they collide with anything, with any enemy, in order to decrease its life. The bullet system is going to inherit from the component system. The component system is uh, not the most optimized uh, system of all, okay? Uh, as the official definition says, uh, implement a component system subclass for systems that perform their work on the main thread or use jobs not specifically optimized for ECS, okay? So uh, this code that we are doing right here is not extremely optimized for ECS, okay? Later on, uh, we will see how to increase the, the performance with uh, systems that are more disconnected from the main code. But the advantage of working with component system is that we would have access uh, from here to the main program, okay? So what uh, we are going to implement, we are going to extend a functionality, okay? This functionality right here. And here we have a compiler error, and we are going to check what it is. It's because we are asking for a game object as a parameter. But as I told you, uh, we cannot use game objects for uh, in uh, components, okay? So instead we are using the game objects ID. Okay, so this is uh, the ID of the game object who is shooting. So we are going to replace that as a parameter. Okay, so three and what we are doing here is just getting the get instance ID and comparing if the value is different because we don't want that the same bullet collides with the one who has shot it. Back to the bullet system, we don't have any compiler errors. The next thing that we are going to uh, copy is it's going to be this one, okay? And we can add it just right here, just after this this system, okay? And this is a, a script, a system that it's going to inherit from system base, so it's more optimized than the component system for to work for ECS. And what this system does is to check if the property is active of the component uh, bullet component is false, meaning that this bullet should be destroyed. And what it does is destroy the entity that is attached to this uh, bullet component. Okay, so these two systems are going to work in parallel, and are, uh, these two systems are going to perform actions on the entities who have the bullet component attached to each entity. For example, in the case of uh, the component system, the bullet system, what we are doing is that we are um, retrieving all the entities that have the bullet component and the translation component attached to it. And with that data, we are able to check if the bullet is active. We are going to move the bullet right here and uh, we are going to apply this this uh, this translation to the component translation. After that, we are going to update the bounds of the bullet, and here, this is the connection with the normal program code, okay? This is what is going to decrease the performance of, of, the, of our solution. But uh, in, by this way, we can check if the bullet is colliding with any enemy. If it's calling with an enemy, 
and uh, uh, this enemy has uh, the avatar component, we will decrease its life by the damage of the bullet. Okay, and we will set the bullet to false, so this other system can destroy that uh, entity with the bullet component. Also, we can destroy the bullet if the time as limit that we have set for the bullet to live has gone now above the time to disappear. So right now, uh, the entity has only uh, one component, that is uh, the custom component when that we have created, the, the bullet component. And we are interested to be able to add multiple components. One way to do it is just like this. Uh, when we are creating the entity, aside from defining uh, one, uh, one component, we can add more components. And the other way is just by creating a, a data structure, a data structure that will contain all the components that we need. And that's what we are going to do here. Okay, we are going to create uh, this structure that is called entity archetype. And this entity archetype is going to contain all the necessary uh, components uh, in order to be able to uh, fully uh, move and render our bullet. Okay, so let's copy this code. And when we are creating the bullet, instead of only using one component, we are going to create an archetype with all the, uh, all the components that we need. We are going to import all the components that we need. Okay. We have, of course, our bullet component. This will allow us uh, to move uh, the, the transform of the bullet. Okay. As you can remember, on our bullet system, uh, for each entity, we were just getting uh, the bullet component and the translation component. The translation component will allow us to move uh, the bullet's uh, position to the desired position. And that's what we are doing right here. We are using the information we are updating from the bullet component and we are applying it to the translation uh, component. Okay. Other components that we need, we need uh, the render mesh because we need to render something. We need to render the bullet. Uh, we need uh, also a coordinate system from local to world. We also uh, need uh, the render bones. And finally, uh, this uh, component will allow us to uh, scale any way we want the rendered object. Once we have defined the, the archetype, we can proceed to create the entity with that archetype. Finally, we need to uh, initialize the, the mesh render. That is the component that is left to initialize. And we are going to initialize it with this code. And this code will allow us to add to the uh, component uh, mesh render the necessary information about the mesh and the material to that uh, to that entity okay we need to, to also to define some couple of members okay and now we have to set up these uh, two public variable members so go to the editor and on the bullet uh, controller You are going to specify for the mesh just a sphere. And for the, for the material, we are going to choose, for example, the red material. Okay. So going back to the code, the only thing uh, left to do is to initialize the, the data of the archetype. So far we have declared the structure, but we haven't uh, set up the data of that archetype yet. So that's what we are going to do now. So just after creating the entity with the archetype, we are going to set the component data of the bullet component with the information we need. 
okay so here are some parameters that now we need to declare on the shoot bullet in order to complete the initialization of this uh, archetype so we are going to create all the necessary fields And for all the places that uh, are using the shoot bullet uh, method, we are going to update the call uh, to the shoot bullet uh, method with all the necessary information. So finally, we can proceed uh, to test uh, our progress. And uh, so far, uh, we have disabled all the towers. So we are going to test it just uh, with the player shoot. OK, so we are able to shoot our bullets. Let's check if we are able to uh, decrease uh, the enemy's life. OK, so the shoot logic is working. The next thing that we can do, we no longer need uh, the, the bullet script because uh, now all the logic of the bullets is contained in our uh, bullet system for uh, the entity component system. So we can proceed to remove uh, bullets, but there are a couple of reference right here that we should move from the bullet to the, for example, to the bullet controller. Now we can proceed to remove the bullet script. And for all the instances where we were using these two constants, we are going to update them. Okay. So let's go to the, to the editor, check the errors. Okay, we no longer need uh, the, the bullet manager right here because now our bullets are managed in, in the entity component system. So we can both remove the bullets from here. And now reference to the constants is in the bullets controller. We can go back to the Unity editor. We don't have compiler errors and we can proceed to uh, remove uh, objects in the bullets prefab. We no longer need the, the bullet script. So we are going to remove this from, from here. In fact, we don't need any of this because uh, we are getting the mesh rent uh, from the from the list of available meshes so these bullets are no longer used so we can proceed to just remove them let's try it again let's test and just make sure that we are still able to to shoot okay so the shoot is still working. Okay. Let's check that uh, an enemy is shooting at us. So play it again. Get into any of the enemy's view. And wait. Okay. Okay, even though the enemy is shooting at us, since uh, the player is not inside uh, the avatar shootable, 
uh, is not uh, the system is not able to um, decrease the player's life. For the moment, we are going to leave it like like that. Uh, we are uh, here only interested to implement our uh, system uh, to improve the performance with uh, the entity component system. So at least we know that we are shooting at the player. Now it's the moment to test it for real. So you are going to enable again the towers and uh, we are going to play it. Change to the free camera and let's observe what kind of performance are we getting. Okay. So, so far uh, we are getting uh, better performance. Uh, instead of uh, going uh, around uh, 15 uh, frames per second we are on average of uh, 26 or 27 uh, frames per second this can uh, differ in your machine depending on uh, how powerful is your machine uh, you would get a different performance i have been able to test it in in another machine and I um, got better results, but the other machine was uh, was better. Uh, but you can see that uh, the performance is not uh, so much of a big deal. We have just, okay, uh, we were working with a performance of uh, 14, uh, 14, 15, and now we are working with a performance of uh, 26 uh, frames per second. So it's not much uh, of a big deal. And the reason why uh, this is like this is because the component system the component system depends on the main uh, execution flow and that is stopping us to get the boost in the performance that we need so now i am going to show you uh, what changes uh, i have made in order to instead of using the component system to use uh, system based that is uh, fully integrated with the ECS to get uh, really the boost in performance that uh, we we need. So after making the necessary changes in order to for the bullet system to fully uh, take advantage of the entity component system, we are getting this performance. Let's change to the free camera, and as you can see we are getting way better performance right now. Uh, the reason why we are getting uh, better performance right now is because we have been able to move all the necessary information from the main thread, from the main part of the program, to the DOTS uh, system. So uh, dot system and the entity component system can fully optimize uh, the processing or the parallel processing of that information to get this performance okay so now we are going to check what we have done so you may remember that the main bottleneck that we had was in the bullet system that we were using uh, the uh, component based system and that component based system was depending on the main thread of of the project and uh, that was outside uh, the dot system and the entity component system so we were getting worse performance now we have um, we have created uh, instead of uh, handling uh, everything uh, from the movement to the collision detection with only uh, one system that was that uh, problematic uh, component system now we have split uh, the component system in two systems the bullet translation system and the bullet collision system both systems are using the system base that is fully integrated and optimized to work in the entity component system and uh, what happens here is that uh, for this uh, translation system this is only doing the translation of the bullet okay this is just uh, updating the, the position applying that position on on the translation and uh, increasing the counter just to mm, detect when uh, the time has gone above the time to disappear to tell the system to destroy the bullet and the other system that we have created for the bullet is the bullet collision system also 
in editing from system based, so fully optimized to work with entity component system. And what we are doing here is we are retrying uh, this array, that this array contains the information about uh, the elements that you can shoot at. As you may remember on this, uh, I am going to share this, um, this part. Okay. As you may remember, um, we have the normal part of the code and we have uh, the dots uh, part of, of the code that, uh, well, they are different. And in order to take advantage, to take fully advantage of this part, you need to provide all the information so the dots part doesn't need to request uh, anything to the normal code. And that is what was happening before with our component system for the bullet. Uh, the, this code here had a strong dependency with this thread. So what we have done is that uh, we have moved part of the data we need from the from from here to the dots part. So everything, or at least uh, most of the information, is right there. So the dots uh, system can fully optimize the uh, the operations. Okay. So here is the information we are getting the arrays of the elements that uh, we can shoot okay so we have created this shootable component okay that will contain the um, game object uh, instantiation id the position of that uh, game object the bounds of that game object the damage that we can apply to that game objects and finally a, a boolean that uh, will tell us if uh, we need to destroy or not that uh, object okay the shootable object and uh, back to the um, to the uh, bullet systems this bullet collision system with that array of information is capable to um, for each entity of the bullet just to check if uh, it intersects with any of the existing shootable components okay if in, it intersects okay we set to the bullet to false just to tell the system okay that the bullet is no longer uh, going to be alive and uh, here is important because um, if you um, manage to be interested in uh, in dots in jobs in the entity component system you will notice that um, it's uh, quite hard to um, to program with uh, for it, and uh, in in this particular case, this uh, instruction will allow you to use this array of information inside uh, this for each. Okay, and finally, we schedule the the work so in order for the entity component system to uh, optimize the the whole the whole thing. Okay, the other thing that we have done is we have created this shootable component and what we are doing is that we have created a new um, public method in the bullets controller at shootable where we create this, uh, this component, shootable component and uh, that we are adding this component in the moment that we are creating a new enemy. Okay. If the enemy is shootable, then we are going to add it, create the entity with the shootable component. So this information, instead of the uh, bullet system having to request to the main thread, his, it is going to request to the um, dots part, to the entity component system part. That's why uh, the system will be able to optimize better the, the processing because uh, now we are uh, fully getting or almost fully getting uh, the necessary information inside inside the dots part. Okay. The next part is to create uh, some systems for uh, the, the shootable elements. And here we have our um, component system okay as I said the component system depends on the main thread but in this case the, the uh, when we had uh, that component system for the wood since we had 
thousands of bullets, that was uh, an important bottleneck. But here, for the shootable elements, we only will have uh, just a few elements. Okay, in, com in comparison with the number of bullets, the number of enemies uh, that are going to be shootable uh, are going to be almost insignificant. You just have to consider that maybe at any time we can have uh, even um, 20,000 bullets, and but only around uh, 20, en uh, 20 enemies. So um, this, uh, this component, even though uh, uses a component system is not going to uh, impact the performance so much okay and oh, the only thing that it does this component it gets the the object uh, the avatar and uh, if it has some damage applied by the bullet okay if it has some damage applied by the bullet then it will decrease the the avatar uh, life and reset the damage okay and finally the part that uh, we were missing was the part of okay in the part of the systems i am able to uh, just intersect with uh, a shootable okay and i was able to put uh, the bullet to false but here i am not able to set anything any value from here i can uh, i only can check can uh, request the information but i cannot modify this is important i cannot modify anything from from here i cannot say anything like this this is only to check the information that's why we need this uh, this system this system that uh, is going to check the the shootable element against all the array of bullets okay and here we are able to fully modify the, the shootable component with, with the damage. And with this uh, damage modified, this system would be able to, okay, to decrease the game object damage and eventually kill it. Okay. You may think that it's overly complicated, but uh, yes, it's quite complicated to uh, do that and in the close future um, for projects that uh, require uh, really intensive uh, operations some employers are going to request uh, people specialized in uh, this particular field and this particular field is uh, right now especially complex so um, you will have a hard time uh, in order to fully understand myself i am just beginning with this part uh, so um, it's something that it's quite 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 complex so concluding this lesson remember that you can get uh, the link to the full project uh, from the slides and uh, well just remember that uh, dots uh, the dot system is still in experimental so there are constant changes and some things are uh, and will be uh, deprecated uh, in order to make it work for better ones so by the time you do this lesson, some things might have changed. And uh, just for you to know that uh, the knowledge you are getting uh, in this lesson, even though it's uh, something ECS and the DOT system is something uh, specific from uh, Unity, uh, just for you to know that uh, other uh, game engines have uh, their equivalent to the uh, DOT system. Uh, like it's the, the case of Unreal. Here it, there is just a, a video of showing uh, a demo just uh, showcasing what can be done with uh, with mass AI system. That is the solution implemented in Unreal Engine uh, to deal with uh, this issue. And also for uh, Godot, Godot has also this uh, Godex uh, module that also is uh, their approach for the entity component system so uh, you won't uh, run out of options uh, when you are uh, dealing with with all of these